Um, my name is Mandy. I'm one of this year's uh, co-presidents. AJ Hawley is uh, co-president with me. He should be here a few minutes. Um, don't mind him when he comes rolling on in. But uh, the other board members that are in the room, can you just raise your hand so everybody knows you are? Okay. This is Mary. Mary is fantastic. Wow. She's moving into uh, director of events, and she helps set everything up with Priscilla. So thank you, Mary. We appreciate you. You're fantastic. And um, in addition, we need to definitely give a shout out to Brian and thank K Force for the pizza and soda and the venue. So we very much appreciate you. Thank you for the pizza. Um, we also have Jim. Raise your hand, Jim. Jim's amazing. Uh, Jim is going to be really driving a lot of operations for us, which we love, and all the fun processes. So just make sure you know who your board members are so you can reach out if you need anything from us or have any questions. Selection I just walked in. She's actually our director of membership. Um, so anybody who's new, can you just raise your hand for me? It's your first time. Okay. Or if you're not yet member, awesome. Okay. So do me a favor and just stop by and see Selectiona so we can get your information from you. I just want to make sure we get you the links to our Facebook group, our LinkedIn group. We're not big on soliciting and driving you crazy. We're not gonna like you know drive you nuts with your inbox. But um, do want to make sure we stay in touch with you. And things are going to be changing a little bit. This is, here's AJ. Hi, AJ. Um, AJ is co-president with me. Um, so just, we like to be very transparent about our chapter. We're going through a lot of changes. And we've re we're rebuilding. And we have a lot going on in the next few months. New visions, new strategies. And we are actually starting to recruit for this coming year's board. So if anybody is interested, it is a huge opportunity. We get to build our chapter to be what we want it to be. It's unbelievable. It's a really empowering experience. We literally get to do whatever we want. So if anybody's looking to build your personal brand, get more involved, we try to have fun and just really learn and grow together. So I think we're pushing probably about end of June is when we're thinking for doing the final elections. So if you're interested in that or maybe just curious and not yet ready to commit, um, let us know and we want to talk to you. Okay. Um, so I think that's really it in updates for now. So let me go ahead, uh, please excuse me for reading off of this, but this is written from Priscilla, Priscilla's perspective, so I wanna just put it in into her notes. So Priscilla Parta, thank you so much for joining us. Um, as you guys all know, we're gonna be talking about elicitation, and she has several years of experience in leading initiatives, initiatives programs, and projects across various industries, such as search engine marketing, manufacturing, and finance. She's extremely passionate, maybe would even say somewhat obsessed with learning, innovation, problem solving, and challenging the status quo. Um, she takes an invested interest in everything she's part of. So you should talk to us about coming to over time at VA. Um, but yeah, she's definitely pouring all she has into seeing programs, projects, and people come that she comes in contact with become successful leaders in the industry. So thank you so much for being here, Priscilla. I am really excited to hear this. And without further ado, come on up. <coughs> I'll go ahead and um, I'll just click through this for you. So you can just let me know since this is. Okay, Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming out. By the way, um, I just wanna say, um, I might be nervous though at times, you know, if, I, if it's feeling like a little bit too, like, you know, I don't know, more like, <laughs> proper or something like that, we can definitely be informal. And what I'm hoping is that, um, maybe we go slide. really what I want to do tonight is I just want us to engage. I want this night to be something that you feel like you can own your experience here. You can own what you gather from tonight. And um, in doing that, ask questions, challenge me. If there's things that, you know, that I talk about that don't align with your experience, I am not the expert of all things. I 100%, you know, I learned from really great leaders. I learned from my mistakes that I've made, things like this. So, you know, please share, even maybe answer questions that maybe, you know, at any moment, don't wait to like say something or ask a question. Just like feel free to engage as it happens. So, or else you might lose it and I don't want that. I want this to be a good time. So for all of us, then we can iterate as we go. So we have like slides we can cover, but we don't have to like tick off slides. It's more about making sure we're uh, being able to make fun, focus on what you want. Tonight, so. Yeah, anyways, talking about that, what kind of brought everybody out? Like, are there certain things that you're really hoping we focus on? 
tonight that you want to gather from it? If so, I want to make sure we're honing in on those points. Not, all Not everybody talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have to, but anything specific for the elicitation? Go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm um, particularly interested in um, the, the techniques that you are going to talk about tonight. So okay. really looking to kind of glean you know, the different techniques that okay. we can leverage. Anybody else? I'm always looking for new applications for old skills. So if you have any like innovative ideas on how we can use stuff we might already know in different ways, that'd be awesome. Okay. Anything else? And we can always add to this list. I just want to get something going so I kind of understand, you know, what everybody's really looking for and we can hold on on it. But I think this is a great angle. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> I'm looking through here and this is something that over time we learn. Yes. Okay. Some of the best information comes out of informal conversations, not the standard mm -hmm. meeting itself. Exactly. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Thank you. You were so, so I've been interested in getting um, my BA certification for, for a while. So maybe steps to do that okay. or, or some idea of where to go to, to get signed up to take the test. Yeah. That would be more of uh, the, the directors and the, the board yeah. can help yeah. you more with that. Which okay. should definitely, definitely connect with us after. Okay. Yes. Okay. Jim is a huge asset for you. Selectiona, HA, myself, we can definitely Okay. I think it's always nice to hear things that are up and coming. So, you know, as we talk about uh, new generations that are entering in this uh, in this space, how do we connect with them? How do we elicit things that are, uh, you know, coming from that millennial generation? And, and how do we connect in a way that is meaningful, but also you know, impactful there? Thank you. Is there something specific with that, AJ, around elicitation? So that, that's my question, is you know, is there anything that is coming out that, that's kind of newer that we are engaging or finding new ways to engage? So Mary's question, it's basically the inverse of Mary's question. <laughs> new stuff for old applications. That's right. <laughs> I think these are perfect um, because I feel like a lot of this is really what we'll be touching on. There are some things that really like, there's these ways that we evolve kind of like in our learning growing throughout this and I feel like this is really even elicitation in itself so maybe when we go on to the next slide and we kind of talk about it because whenever I kind of started talking with individuals and I was like I'm going to talk on elicitation they're like what is elicitation they're trying to figure out what it is and I feel like that's because what we've known it to be is gathering requirements for a really long time and this is already kind of that uh, change in what we've known for a long time and it's still what we know it it's just changing and honing in on some of, and I feel like even surfacing up some of the best practice of what gathering requirements is supposed to be. So many times, and I, I love this <laughs> cartoon, I'm sure you're probably looking at it, but um, yeah, I feel like when we talk about gathering requirements, it kind of feels like this need to be able to figure out what's the solution and what does somebody want. And sometimes it's really hard to even describe what we want, let alone get somebody else to tell us what they want up front. And so I, um, I think that really that's why it's changed from gathering requirements because it's not figure, how, uh, defining up front what the solution should be, but really uncovering and surfacing these needs. Which I feel like if you've been doing business analysis for a while, or if you've not, um, either way you kind of start understanding over time that that's really what it's about. It's understanding the needs first and then figuring out what the possible solutions are. So elicitation, uh, maybe you could go to the next one. In the him in the uh, Babak, it talks about how it's really to call forth or draw out. Even somebody had mentioned like it's like this magical thing, and I think if you do it really well, it could probably look magical. But in reality, um, it is something. There's best practices. There's techniques you can follow. Things like that. We'll discuss some of these particular parts, but um, in it. Some of the things that I took out from the bow that I felt like from my experience were really valuable and kind of honed in on a couple of things was one, you know, it's just like he was talking about. A lot of what happens isn't necessarily this formal kind of 
you know, experience where you're always planning this focus group, sometimes there are these informal conversations. You just stop by somebody's desk, and all of a sudden you're kind of gathering this information from somebody that you didn't realize was going to be so pivotal, uh, pivotal to maybe this objective of something you're trying to accomplish. So they can be, uh, elicitation can happen in planned or unplanned ways. And then it also is not something that happens just in one phase of the analysis process. It happens all the way throughout. Um, it's an ongoing thing. And as soon as you feel, at least for me, as soon as I feel like I kind of start understanding something, it's like then all of a sudden something creeps up and it's like, hey, you didn't really understand it the way you uh, thought you did. And it's kind of digging in, asking the right questions and really kind of keep honing in on it till you really get a good consensus and understanding amongst whoever's impacted. So, and it, it comes, you know, this can come from stakeholders engaging directly with individuals as well as leveraging resources such as like data mining, things like this, using, you know, data to be able to help you come to conclusions. Uh, there's one other piece, and then maybe we'll continue on, that I really like from the BABOC, because uh, I know, I think everybody's probably trying to figure out what does the BABOC say about this as well. And um, something that they mentioned was were the tasks that are involved for elicitation. And I think those are kind of key. But what to me is not necessarily do you, did you prepare, did you conduct, it's like making sure you're getting the right intention of what those things are supposed to be. So for me, in preparing, I think that really kind of goes to the very beginning of trying to figure out, you know, what's the scope of the objective that you're trying to reach? How do you kind of engage people at the right moments? And how do you even, at the very beginning, let's say, of a project, making sure you're engaging with individuals at the, with the right individuals at the right moments. So that's been one of the challenges that I've run across is making sure that I'm engaging with the right individuals, knowing who they are. So that comes into like asking a lot of questions, engaging maybe up front with whoever the SME is in that space, and then also the PM, the project sponsor, and just kind of understanding like what do they see as the objective? What do they understand as uh, what you're trying to go after? And maybe even try to figure out how you can prove that it's valuable to go after that particular objective that they're setting in front. And then, Ms. Yeah. Is there anything, is there anything here, or I'm sorry, I should say this differently. Is there anything that's key in terms of these tasks, and I know these are high-level concepts, but that you think is maybe missing? Um, I feel like, for me, the key is not, is, not necessarily do I feel like we need to add more bullet points, but I think it's that they don't happen in necessarily a strict order for me. I feel like we go from one point and then back to another point occasionally. Like, say for instance, a mistake that I've learned from, and even Ju uh, Judith from the French, she's, she was my boss previously, and she can kind of attest to it, is I went to the point where I got to confirm, and I knew that there was a certain stakeholder on this particular effort that we were trying to tackle that needed to be involved, but I, but I knew there was a risk that they might not come in because of different political things going on in the background and what have you. And so like, there was this accident and they're like, oh, I can't come because this accident came up. And I'm like, oh, okay. But then as soon as we got to that point, everybody else was in the room and we got to this conclusion of like conducting this solicitation. And it's like, we understood what the need was. And then all of a sudden when we, when we came to like kind of communicate like where we were understanding the need and what we were going after, all of a sudden it's like, okay, we need to restart back because he wasn't on board. And it was okay he wasn't on board, but it was like trying to make sure, I think for me, that I was engaging the right stakeholders. And so it wasn't necessarily like, do I feel like there's a task that's missing, but did I engage people at the right place and did I put a halt on the certain times where I was engaging when the right people weren't in the room? So that was for me, that was my experience, but. To add to that, you could also iterate this. So talking about it from a, um, I almost add a bullet that says iterate, um, and you can iterate it actually even at different levels of specificity, I would imagine. Yeah. So like at a very like high level or functional level, and then you know, farther down. I think you still do the same tasks. I think the tasks kind of live there, but you, yeah. you can definitely lather, rinse, repeat on this one. Yeah, you can, you can write out my mouth. <laughs> 
Um, so that's what I was going to say. Like, the thing that I didn't see there is, is a change in the direction. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then, I think in general, not just in the bad walk, but I feel like you can look all throughout. There's all kinds of methods that you can use to be able to kind of elicit information. And I feel like we really trying to figure out, I'm not going to go through what all these methods are. If there's anyone that sticks out, you know, say something, we can talk about it. I've not even done all of them myself. I think I've done most of them, but probably maybe not interface analysis. I've never done that, to be honest. But the ones that I really like are, um, I would say, document analysis when it comes to having somebody that's not necessarily available to me that knows what a particular process is about or something I'm trying to dig into, but there's information available that kind of gives me a little bit of a guide in, um, on what's there and then kind of build upon it. I also really like being able to do interviews and observe, and I kind of like to couple that. So I feel like it's not this strict, like this is the one to go after, it's figuring out what's the right method to use at the right time. So for me, I like being able to kind of observe individuals and kind of interview them at the same time and um, just make it a little bit less formal, just kind of like trying to glean from them, you know, what their experiences are. And one of the things that I like is, um, being able to hone in on those personal cues. So trying to like gauge like, you know, uh, being able to reflect back to them kind of things that they're portraying to me. So like if they're sharing a joke, I'll laugh a lot, you know, to uh, increase that engagement. You know, I, I might, you know, if they're running into some error, like maybe they're on their computer and they're kind of showing me a process and they run into this error and I'm like, oh gosh, I hate when that happens, and just try to like create that you know environment for empathy and show them that I really care and things like that. So, I don't know. Um, is there, is there, is yeah. there something on here that, that you feel really inclined towards or a challenge maybe? Like something just with your experiences and how you were able to be challenged and figure out which of these to implement? Because I know that's a good feeling other people might be feeling the same way. I struggle with that, with deciding which methods or tactics to implement in a situation, and then being able to switch it up if you're not getting a response you're desiring. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people struggle with that. Even the most senior VAs, I feel like it's constantly trying to improve and trying to figure out what works and when it works and when it doesn't and being able to pivot when it's not. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, um, something that I've liked a lot is when there's, let's say for instance, there's a lot of individuals that need to be um, kind of, con you've got to gather information from a lot of individuals and you need to be able to get consensus. I really like the um, focus groups, and I really like kind of a requirements workshop, things like this. I'm not always crazy about, and that's because really you can get multiple individuals into the room, and especially if you have the right, um, you have somebody that even let's say is kind of that sponsor or that product owner, however you're set up for the approach on it. I think that also helps kind of drive home, you know, what you're needing to be able to accomplish and gather that. Quickly, so I like that one. I don't like brainstorming some. I love creativity, but I'm not crazy on brainstorming all the time just because I feel like you can get a lot of group think and you have to be extremely skilled and extremely experienced in order to create an environment where that's not happening. So if you're really skilled and experienced, it's great for you, but otherwise I think that might be a little bit tough. Maybe even some of the other ones I'm mentioning could be, but I think that one does it depend a whole lot on the project? Yes. Because interviews, observations, stuff like that, maybe if you're making something better. Brainstorming if you're starting from scratch. Document analysis, I mean, you're, if you're doing a rip and replace, you know, giving them the same functionality with a different program. Yeah. I mean, or these are great, to, yeah. and I'm not a VA, but these are great, but I would see several of them being good for a certain type of project and several of them being better for others rather than trying to do, I don't know, 
Are you saying that some people actually go through every one of those? No, no, no. Oh, oh okay. They apply certain yeah. ones to yeah. the, Okay, that, uh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, that's 100% um, I'm definitely am not trying to say do every one of these. Okay. Definitely, you have to leverage what works and what you know is the best fit for the project mm -hmm. and what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. I'd like to maybe add that um, you know I use a, a couple of you know I use a myriad of different things yeah. simultaneously sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to also say with this, you know, and, and and definitely this is not a part of the elicitation chapter, but it's. It's a great input into elicitation, which is definitely you want to be effective in when you're doing this. So it would require that BAPM part of it, which is the business analysis, planning and you know, planning all of all this in order for you to be effective in brainstorming and facilitating the session. You want to make sure you've actually reviewed maybe that chapter of the BABOC so that going into these requirements workshops you're making it the best that it can be productive and you're getting you're actually going in with some pre things that I mean, pre notions of what you want to get out of it who who your game players are your your dream team and what not so to make those to make those methods effective yeah. and so maybe when I kind of like challenge you guys if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe I even kind of throw out some scenarios just off the top of my head and see like if collectively like what are some of the things that you would use and because I feel like it's just like you were saying it's not this one size fits all and it's not doing all of these things it's doing certain things at the right moment to be able to engage in the right conversations the way it's supposed to happen and have those questions so like say for instance okay if you're really trying, you're having a hard time being able to get people to kind of really uncover like what the needs are, and you feel like you've kind of defined maybe at some point you you've got something as a baseline of okay, this is what we're really trying to go after. This is what the need is, and you have a couple of possible solutions, but you're not sure what the right solution's going to be. And so you you're at the point now where you want to propose something, but you don't want to do you don't want to go on ahead and complete development. Because if you develop, it's going to be so costly, and you don't even know at the moment if, the, if you're on target for the right solution out of the possible solutions you could deliver, right? So what do you think is a possible method on here that you might use? I think the thing that jumps out to me is prototyping. If yes. you're at that point, people want to see a picture. A picture says a thousand words. So, you know, if you're talking about UX design, you know, a, a GUI interface, or if you're talking about a flow, you know, a process flow, or... Yeah, because then you can go, then you can actually go, if, it, if you have a process flow and they say, yeah, the flow is correct, then you can actually go and gather the requirements from that. Yeah. Was anybody going to say anything different? I mean, you could, but... There's a presentation two or three weeks ago, and the agile where you're talking about product camp. Yes. That yeah. Was very because I kind of got everybody together on all different things. It was market focused. Yeah. You're not just developing around an idea. You're developing around a market. Exactly. Yeah. And I have to. I don't. I'm not a VA either. I kind of work in the space for a long time. But looking at all these things, I'm looking at the agile
because the, the people for more of a POC, they couldn't, they couldn't visualize, I think, in the way that I was hoping to be able to tell me gains and pains and, and all these things because it, it was a future vision. Does that make sense? So we just started a conversation, which then became brainstorming. Now, I think if you're saying relationship engagement, like, no one will talk to you? Well, it, I, I don't know. Some, more like of, like some of this stuff, depending on if you're working with a virtual team, you may not yeah. talk to each other. Like, you may, and if you do, True. and you're in a warm situation, mm -hmm. um, you may be doing virtual dots somewhere. So it may right. be what she was talking about earlier as far as with group think, where yeah. everybody's putting a dot here, I'm going to stick my dot here too. So. And part of that goes back to that this previous slide that she had before about the preparation, mm -hmm. right? So if you're going through and you're looking at your stakeholders, you would identify some of this in that preparation stage where you'd be able to find out what is the level of engagement, what is, or who's going to be involved in this project, is there some weird political thing where I can't put Bill and Tom in a room together because they're going to fight it out, you know? <laughs> and it's, it's a, you know, one of those things that you kind of run into, so. Yeah, and it, I was going to say to that, it's, it's about communication style. Like when you're interviewing, right. they'll ask you, how do you get something from a stakeholder who is hard to reach? We have to figure out what is the, do they prefer email? Are you in a collaborative environment? Can you walk by their desk? Would they rather have a ping? Um, but if you're going to go talk to a developer, you, you should have your question ready. You can't just go to a developer's desk and say, oh, explain the system to me. You have to know what you're asking so that A, you're not taking up a lot of their time, and B, you're getting something very quickly and then moving on. And it's also like, so I've been a BA for about 10 years and I sold, I sold software before. So when I'm trying to get something from a stakeholder, my sales part comes out, and it's it's really building that relationship and you know convincing them that them helping me will help the company, helps the team. You know what I'm saying? It's because at the end of the day, everybody has a different uh, to-do list. Everybody has, is accountable to somebody else. You know, you have this project and you can't wait to get started, but it's not everybody's you know number one priority. So it's a lot of building relationships oh, yeah. as well. So this is supposed to give you a process, but as we know from working, it only gives us a outline, uh, yeah. for lack of a better word. Framework. 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 Yeah. You call it whatever you want. <laughs> you know, um, so relationship engagement is one part, and the other is strategic alignment is the other thing that we deal with in this space. So can you pull that thing up we were looking at before? Yeah. Thank you. Which one of these would help you determine strategic alignment if you are relationship engagement as well? Yeah, so uh, I love what you said earlier and how you were talking about kind of like uh, teams that you're having to communicate with virtually. So for instance, right now, what I'm doing is I'm helping work with international teams. So there's only two people that work in the same office as me. Everybody else that I'm pretty much engaging with, there's a couple of other people, but most everybody else on a day-to-day -day basis I'm engaging with are having to be done through calls because they're at different places around the world. And what happens is, especially with the corporate culture, Sometimes, you know, there's this like really nice politeness and I love that, but what happens is it means that not everybody feels free to challenge, not everybody wants to speak up. And it's just like how you're saying, like, they're real, like, oh yeah, you know, nobody would disagree. But then what I've done is occasionally, especially because I'm doing a lot with uh, strategy and the alignment is at the moment, is what I've done is I start trying to engage individuals in individual conversations. So I do like these more one-on-one -on -one kind of interviews, if we want to call it that. That's the one I would kind of pick at the moment. And it all depends because I, right now what we're doing is we're starting to drill in to like specifics. And I feel like that's where you start honing in on which method to use and when to use it. So like whenever I come, whenever I start talking with individuals one-on-one, -on -one, I can start boosting their confidence and like, oh wow, yeah, I completely agree. We should mention that. And it's it's not that they shouldn't have mentioned it. They just want to know somebody's back there that will back them and be like, yeah, yeah, go on ahead and say it. And so then I'll ping somebody even whenever we're kind of like doing more of like, let's say, I would say like a focus group or something when there's other individuals on the line and maybe a project just getting kicked off and I'm kind of during the kickoff and 
uh, on a kickoff or something like that, and they're really trying to hone in on you know what the need is. And so there will be somebody, and I'll ping them, and I'll be like, hey, why don't you mention that that you were telling me? And then all of a sudden they'll speak up, and I'm like, oh yeah, great. And I'll, you know, I kind of like use these filler words or these like, uh huh, uh huh, something like that to kind of like show because nobody hears it, you know, or I'm sorry, everybody hears it, but it's like those feelers that kind of encourage those things. So I feel like that's a part of it is figuring out how you can tailor, you know, your inflection, how you can, if you're in person, which is the best way possible, but again, it's sometimes it's, it's not is like maybe even let's say for instance remotely sometimes what we'll even do is we'll use camera so we'll do skype meetings but we'll have to turn on our camera it's not always effective because <laughs> as i'm sure you probably experience like people will still kind of do things on their own end and but yeah just trying to do certain things like that so you get one more sort of on the box yeah that sort of keeps coming up in my head as you're speaking what do you do with the person that disagrees with everything? <laughs> How do you deal with that, with this? It disagrees with what? It disagrees with just, doing things? No, just generally. Like, so, like you, you just get someone says, we can't do that. We don't have time for that. We, I mean, I, I could go on and on and on, but. Yeah, absolutely. I just don't, like, <laughs> just like I, I can do it in person. Like, <laughs> in, in, in person, I can do it. But virtually, I'm learning to get people to raise their hand before they raise their hand. And to me, that's so strange because I just raise my hand. Yeah. So, so. Um, so in my experience, and I have very recent experience okay. with the, uh, the naysayer stakeholder on the okay. team, um, we, uh, my colleague and I, basically kind of separated her from the herd um, and did an interview observation with her specifically okay. to understand her tensions, issues, and problems. Okay. Like, why was she the one person ju that just couldn't buy into this, this fear. method and this discussion? It's fear. It, it, was, it was control, actually. Okay. Um, yeah. But it's very similar. Well, um, I like that. So <laughs> fear comes first. Um, yeah. And yeah. uh, then control. Yes. So so, so she, it was definitely a control issue. Um, what we needed to get to the bottom of was, uh, you know, I, I asked her in front of the team, you know, what are your requirements that are going to let me sunset this old app and, and make this new app the, the one-stop place to do this stuff? And she just froze up, couldn't answer that question. So we took her aside and said, show me everything this system does. Show me why that's important. And we made her really understand that we were sensitive to her concerns, her fears, yeah. her issues, the things that she felt like she still needed to control by herself or with her colleagues. Um, and that really br brought us to a place where she could trust us a bit more um, to, to specifically see to her needs. Because what her fear was, was that we would say, yeah, it's gone Kathy, back. nobody cares about your stupid <laughs> access database. <laughs> <laughs> turn it off. That's not her not her. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I had to also go to my decision maker and be like, look, we're not going to let her get in the way of your progress. If she wants to keep her thing, that's a thing, but we're going to get your thing done too. And, you know, it's just kind of working that separately sometimes just to bring it back around. And in the end, Escalate is the last resort if you have to. I didn't have to, but yeah. yeah I usually that doesn't work either because it just long term that doesn't work. You can't go up to solve a problem when that solve the problem or down low. Like it this, depends on whether the strategic message of the it, of the higher it, up it, is behind it. People I've known for 15, 17, and 18 years. Mm -hmm. So when I go somewhere, I always have to mind my P's and Q's. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. I don't speak, but I always have to mind my P's and Q's because I just never know who it's going to be where I'm going to. And I think the relationship part of it is important, but you said something earlier, logic. If you have five people all on board and one isn't, it's it's saying, well, they're all on board because it's logically the thing to do. So I think it's both. Or they're a joiner. That's the other issue. Group thing. That's it. So it can yeah, help exactly. too. Exactly. Is it or is it? So it, it depends on their personality. You yeah. Know, you may be right. If you know, as far as if, but again, it's, it's sometimes there's a reason why someone's speaking up and saying no. Yes, exactly. Just figure out and figuring out is it because right. they have something really that needs to be unearthed. It's like surfacing those things that maybe 
other people haven't said for whatever reason. Either they, it's not their, something that they have to deal with or what have you. And then um, back to strategic. Um, yeah. Um, a lot of things. Yes. Because um, for this to work, yes. it's going to have to be profitable. So eventually, in some capacity, someone's going to have to use it either to make money or save money. Mm -hmm. So how does this all work to do that? I know that you're working with a stakeholder that hopefully <coughs> did that first, mm -hmm. but this what if they didn't? This is, this, this is elicitation happening, should be happening early on in the process, and then also continuing Throughout. Oh, got it. Okay. So, so it's not a one timer. No, no, no. This got it. Okay. Not I got it. I just said. That the, and ha hand it off to the dev team, done with the dev team and UX. I did budgeting for years. Mm -hmm. And so before elicitation, we always figured out who was going to pay for it and how it was going to continue to be paid if something happened and it didn't work. Like cost analysis. Yeah. Like cost analysis, yeah. Like cost analysis accounting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what he said. Yeah. Well, we were talking about that. You have one program, you never sunset the old program, which is where you get the cost savings yeah. from, and then now you're paying to have both programs run mm -hmm. until you pick another one. I just, I just want to touch on something for AJ's point here. So AJ and I and um, Hoy from IBA, we all went to the Project Summit Business Analysis World conference last week. Did anyone ask for that? No? Okay. So one thing that, that they said there that I think um, is really important is basically things are shifting and, and there's not just one way to do things. Something that I'm very near and dear to is is UX and it you knows this I say it pretty much at every IOD thing. But I feel like UX design now, and BAs should be more like this. And one of the key quotes that one of the gentlemen said is, BAs need to stop just writing and get up and start drawing. And I feel like that visual, conceptual mindset, which is throughout some of this, and I know you're gonna hit on some of this later, so I don't wanna ruin it, but in the sense that, you know, this is just straight out of the Babbock. There's a lot of other research methods that, that you can do. Like this is just what's what's written down. And that's what's so cool to have these conversations because, you know, Izzy may have something that she's done which someone taught her randomly one day and has worked, you know, that, that she can pass on to all of us. And, and that's the whole point of what we're trying to do is so because Babbox says one thing but it's just a framework. I guess that's a question. Where does stuff like that fit now? Sorry? So where does stuff like that fit with now? How do you get? How do you get? How, exactly. How do you get to <laughs> that information? I think it's you're 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 starting the conversations that we have on in the hallway. Kind of. Exactly. Those are my favorite places to have conversations because you can learn more sometimes in the hallway. Yeah, exactly. That's why we want to do this and keep it so engaging. And just so you know, one of our big pushes this year for IBA is we we as a chapter want to drive up to the top level with IBA. Um, on the international and national level to start being influencers and advocate for what we need um, to drive top down. So all of these things that you guys bring up to us as challenges and things is what we want to help channel back up to make change happen. I was going to answer her question earlier. So, you know, what I found too is um, questionnaires are very successful for that as well because it kind of divides that and lets people uh, create their own set of answers, right? And then now you can compare the answers and contrast them across different groups and different individuals. So you can kind of avoid some of that group think that you were uh, referring to earlier. And, you, and yeah. I just I, I, I they're anonymous, right? Again, I, but I have thoughts on that too because. You know, I, you know, we do live in Florida, and this is a right to work state. You say the wrong thing to the wrong person, even if it's in a survey, they know where they came from. So are you sure that those were? So I've used questionnaires several times for those remote teams, right? And so then we can review it together. So now it's, all right, well, you know, um, Mandy said this, we had Karen say this. All right, so, so what, what is the difference here, and why do we have 
this discrepancy between you know answer A and answer B, and you know can we explain it? Is this a perception thing? Was the question worded wrong? You know something like that where you can take ownership that way. And so it's it's my fault. Maybe I worded this incorrectly. Uh, can we get some clarification there? And then now we're having a discussion where you can kind of engage so not, individuals. They have, input. They have a, like a true false. Of you give them yes. the questionnaire ahead of time. Correct. I've done I've done with them. But I think to AJ's point, you're 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 not engaging them necessarily in a face-to-face, -face intimidating kind of environment with other people around, and like she was saying, and you know, Mary was saying about. I think all this stuff is so logical. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm thinking, what, which one of these things would be the most intimidating? I'm thinking of it is. Um, workshops, I think, are. Requirements pretty workshops are. Yeah, intimidating. just from because you're in a group like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. The group that's you know important. Um, I could definitely um, relate to you know because I'm all I've been virtual for ten plus years, so I haven't been around people. But we are very creative. <laughs> <laughs> we we do all day long with other computers. So we we webex. She sounds like she's an expert. I want no, her no, 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 Engage people. So usually, if I'm doing a jazz session or a requirements workshop, I'll be like, Julie, bring it up, bring up your system, and I'll have her switch it over, have her show her desktop, so we can actually visibly see what it is you're talking about. Because I have no clue what you're talking about. Show me. And sometimes I have no clue myself. I'm like, I just push the pressure on them. The expert, the SME, or whatever. Share the show. Well, I'm sorry, right, for desktop. Right, desktop. And the beauty part about it too is that, say, like if you're showing your desktop, you can actually say, control my desktop. Because sometimes they are, they know where they want to go, and I'm like, oh, no, I can't drive. So I'll just say, you know, cool. click on it and you drive. So she's clicking around, and 30 people are on the call. They're, you know, so it's more visual. So that's another method it's kind of like you know interface analysis it kind of goes along with with that showing um you know the system and how things work and that goes a long way that's a good example yeah yeah so um i read that because i feel like a lot of what we're touching on it really kind of goes from baba to also something that we see even on the pamphlet that I was kind of putting out. So if you don't have one in front of you, I think there's one probably around you somewhere. But I feel like there's a couple of topics, and I, I just wanted to touch on because I feel like really as a business analyst, I mean, a big part of the goal is really being an investigator and investigating things, surfacing up things, being able to try to really draw out and uncover like what the real truth is, and being able to hone in on those social cues and trying to be able to tailor to them as much as possible. You can't appease everybody all the time. And so I think, but there are certain things that you can do to be able to help create the best environment. And I think that goes into some of what you're talking about is, I, I feel like and it, it's kind of going a little bit into some of the things we see in here, but also even beyond that is, and we won't go into it tonight, but I feel like it's creating the right culture and environment in the space that you encompass. So the people that you touch um, and being able to create that. So for me, like there are certain things that I do to uh, try to get people to break down some of those barriers. And it, um, so I just want to touch on it really fast. Sorry, because it's like top of mind for me. So there are certain things that I might do. Like say, for instance, I'll purposely put myself out there as very naive, um, very like put my faults out there for people to kind of like, let people exploit my faults to help invite, you know, criticism. And we even see things like this in here. Um, say for instance, like, I think I folded on a little bit. So I think you even see it like in kind of like a targeting and something that they talk about is like invite criticism. And um, it's a deliberate false statements. Yeah, maybe deliberate false statements or like say for instance, I make mistakes all the time, 100%. I'm sure you're probably the same way, but I, 100% put them out there for people. Like, I will make it so visible that you can't miss it. Like, if I'm falling, I want you to know I fell. 
I want you to know I'm humiliated about it. Like, cause I want people to know I'm human. I want them to know, like create this environment where we can feel comfortable to talk and be open and be human, which means we make mistakes and kind of like encourage those conversations. And not everybody's gonna be that way, especially in environments where you feel like, okay, if I mess up or say the wrong thing or I do the wrong thing, like somebody might be watching and might wanna like, you know, like I shouldn't be in this role, but for me, I feel like I need to be in an environment like that, and that means I need to help create it. So, but there's other things. Okay, so let's just talk about like some of the things that you did. Anybody look at this already by chance? Mm -hmm. Maybe you just talking about some of the techniques. What were some of the things you liked, by the way? Like, was it did anything stand out? You're like, oh, I love that. I feel like these are certain things you can do. For me, so, that. So, so I looked at this with Priscilla last night and I was just freaking out because yeah. I thought this was so, I thought it was so fascinating to, to think of ourselves in this way and such a relatable, important thing in our culture. And I think sometimes BAs, you know, we get kind of pushed to the wayside a lot mm -hmm. in our projects. But I think when you really think of yourself in this role and for others here that aren't BAs, to more so look at BAs that way. But this one, about the false statement, I thought was so awesome because say something wrong in the hopes that the person will correct your statement with true information. I think that's that's, that's really key because if you even if you know it's wrong, you're forcing the truth out of them. And this goes back to some of those techniques that you were talking about with relationship management. How do you build that relationship and get people comfortable? Really that kind of seems. Go ahead. That kind of seems disingenuous. <laughs> to say something purposely wrong. I think... But playing young and playing the hate works on the case. Clearly, you have to be careful about how you're... Right. Or what you're saying. But. So, yeah, I would, I want to touch on it because I think it can come across that way, right? So for me, 100%, honestly, I really am not the best at everything. So what I'm doing personally is I'm just highlighting my faults for people sometimes. But then also, self-deprecation. Yeah, self-deprecation. That's what I kind of do. But uh, to go into that point too, is sometimes it's not self-deprecation because I try to come off confident at the same time. Because I don't want people to doubt that I know what I'm doing. Like a large extent, then it's definitely not effective. So like I love actually what Judith has done in the past that I've seen her do. And one of the things that she's done is she'll kind of throw something out there that like gets people to react like, oh no, that's not what I'm saying. And then all of a sudden, and then she'll be like, well, I'm not really saying that. So she kind of like goes, okay, well, I threw that out there. I'm not really saying that kind of thing. And so then it kind of gets that genuine piece back into it again. Exactly. But it invites that conversation to start flowing because then people are automatically like, oh no, can't do that. We gotta and talk about it more. So so I, I don't think he's, he's, he's saying something wrong for for the sake of saying say right. something right. wrong, right? I agree. So, but he's, it's, he's being open on the fact that, you know, you may have more information that I don't have. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I always claim I'm, I'm an IT director that has zero knowledge of IT. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you said that, it's, you know, it's, it's really open for interpretation. So. Do I know how to repair a PC? No. Uh, do I know how SAP works? Yes. Do I know how the infrastructure of SAP is? Yes, but we're not talking about SAP here, right? So we may be talking about something else, which I don't know anything about. So it's, it's all about how you phrase it, I think. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what it is. So it's not 100% wrong. It's just trying to engage with the people so they can they can provide more information. I think it's I mean, that's what it is. Saying something you know is wrong, but being willing to say something you know isn't quite right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's, I didn't finish well, I my think, statement earlier. That's yeah. where I was going. Oh, sorry. I think, I think yeah. you know, we were talking, sense. we could probably agree with sales. Uh, it's an art. Being a VA is an art. Yes. Yeah. And these tools can be used for good or for bad. Mm -hmm. So it's the intent. Yeah. So if, okay. if I'm, yeah. I'm going to say something that isn't true, what is my intent? Is my intent to get at the truth or is my intent to uncover why someone's a naysayer, what the issue is if they don't want to um, reveal it necessarily, they're uncomfortable, sometimes they don't even know. 
Yeah. I think that, that's a lot of it. And you know, what tool to use? A lot of times it's just experience and yeah. trial and error. Yeah. And learning your audience. I think one of my good best approaches is when you you're really genuinely going with a child, like not being a child, but sort of like help me understand, tell me. And I think sometimes it's kind of when you're in the moment with everybody, it, it kind of it can be daunting because you have all these experts and whatnot, and you don't want to take the conversation back to a level that they're like, what, where is this girl coming from? But I think I kind of lead in with maybe putting down some questions, like a framework maybe in the table. Here's my question, what I want to know. So say like if it's an acronym, you know, we're going to discuss this process and it starts with an acronym. I will, I will have these things already pre-written out when we go into the solicitation so we can debunk some of these things. So already, that's why I'm a big person on prep before you go into your investigative. You want to make sure that maybe you do a little, maybe if you've heard a little gossip, you know, about certain things, you know, maybe that naysayer that you were dealing with, put it on paper and then use that form as a, well, I heard someone say something about this. What do you guys think about that? And then document it so that, you know, you have it, that you guys talked about it at some point, whether you ruled it in, in scope or out scope, but, you know, you talked about it. So I haven't had child life. And there were, there were times where I knew that Priscilla was going to ask something that was flat out incorrect. Um, like, you know, do you get paid over time after Fabian? And she said, why would they pay it over time? And people will jump at it. And, but it would be something that from her point of view, she didn't know. The fact that I knew whether they got paid or not, that was a different story. But she was... You know, she was able to get information from a different perspective where she was very, basically simplifying, sim, simplify, simplify, yeah. Yeah, simplifying the process. And it was easier for her to actually get that out, saying, why would you do something like this? Yeah. Yeah. That's a famous trick of attorney. You have the same question. Yeah. 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 So going to that process before, I think that one of the hardest things for me is creating a survey that actually brings value. Um, because it's all, you know, one of the things that you really want to get out of a survey is data. And, and being able to analyze that data. And if the data is not discrete, then it's, it's a mess. You can figure it out what the answers are. Then you have to go through a hundred surveys and trying to put it all together. So getting to that right question that will give you that goal that you're after is very, very difficult. Do you, do you weight questions? Like, do you give them points? Like, I, 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 used, to be, I, I used to be a teacher. <laughs> so I used to, you know, like, and, and you, you build a test same thing, survey, you build it actually so it has so many questions in it, and not all the, po not all the questions have the same points. Yeah. So I'm thinking, like, if you're gonna, if you want data, you can't give each thing you're asking the same amount of points yeah. or value. I, I don't think you can put anything in a box, because yeah. everything, everything we do changes. It That's changes good. day to day, with the client changes on the product, changes on the team, so, I mean, I've, good, I've right? done, right, yes. in the sense where, I think that's why we did this whole big thing back in December on soft skills, and I think all of this ties back to, just personally in my head, I was just thinking about that, like all of this ties back to soft skills. I think BAs constantly need to be polishing soft skills, because it is at the core of And then communication, so right? soft skills and communication. Yeah. Like, you, like, do, like, yeah. scales of justice here. Observation, all these things, yeah. Yeah. There was uh, one other thing that I, well, there were so many things actually that I liked on here, <laughs> but there was one thing I really liked that was talking about like trying to make the conversation to the point where the person doesn't feel like they're being interrogated. Yeah. The conversation's flowing naturally. And so I just really liked that a lot. And <coughs> yeah, I don't know. But I think that's important. So I think some of this, if, this is if my I, dad. I That's my daughter. <laughs> so she followed in the same field as me. I don't know why. I did something wrong. <laughs> so I, 
So one of the things in investigation is, is you need to keep in the back of your mind, I think this was really to your point, is you're building relationship while you're doing your investigation. It does you no good to get what you need if you've destroyed a relationship for the future because you're going to need a lot more. So while some of the techniques might be you know, good for the FBI and they may even be good for us, remember, when you're investigating and you're doing interviewing, you're building relationship. This goes back to earlier, your relationship management is you need to make sure that you're building a relationship for the future. Because not only with that person, but the people that they talk to will also be talking about how your relationship is growing with them. So everyone's a confidential informant? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Some are assets. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so I think we're coming close to time, but there's a, something that I wanted to do, and it kind of hits on the uh, the new application of skills and some of the upcoming trends thing. So I kind of wanted to do the activity as a group. So, anyways, these are some of the things that I like as best practices. Again, they're not like really into the techniques and stuff, but maybe we pass on by that. And I think. Um, you know, our overall goal at the end of the day is to uncover needs that help us figure out like what functional and non-functional requirements are, what the design for the customer experience should look like, things like that. And I want to bring this into what I really like, which is design thinking. And this actually fits on what you're talking about, like, you know, we got to get from to the point where we're starting to like draw and things like that. And I think that starts unearthing kind of like these ideas that we have in our head and kind of puts it visually on paper so we can come together on like what's the right thing at the right moment and like how do we really get the right solution in the end for what needs to be delivered. So what we'll be doing in design thinking, I'm not going to go over it all, but I want to go through the activity. This is going to be very simplified, usually like design thinking to solve these like complex problems where like people are coming from multiple areas of the business and you have to get everybody together to solve for something complex and it's worth the investment of getting everybody in the room together and walking off time to conduct an activity. But for our purpose, what we're gonna do is we're gonna split in half. So I'm thinking like maybe like here, this is one, and then you're uh, another team. And then on this side, you're going to be veggie lover. And then on this side, you're going to be the Nidosaurus. <laughs> and what I want you to do is pick out one person within your group to be your customer. Because we're going to actually say that the customer is going to be involved in this design thinking. Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes it's not. Um, but in this case, we're going to say that somebody is. And um, then from just to go really quick to set expectations of what we're going to be doing is we're going to take five minutes to really kind of empathize and as whoever your customer is, you're going to ask them questions to understand like what do they want at, you know, from the Metasaurus kind of pizza or what do they want from their veggie lover pizza kind of thing and really kind of understand like what they're looking for and then from there we're going to take three minutes to independently draw so we have some stickies and you're going to draw things that you feel like are important of what would help meet their needs and then we're going to take three minutes to kind of like then you're going to come together so you're going to do it first independently without the customer start drawing and then come together kind of look at everybody's things that they've been drawing on these sticky notes to figure out ooh, which ones do you like the most out of all the ideas and come together to figure out what's going to be your pizza that you're going to present to the customer. And then you're going to kind of like draw that on the board. You're going to pick somebody or you can do it as a team. You know, draw your pizza and then you're going to present it to your customer and we're going to get some feedback. So, okay. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started, and then maybe as a group, if you want to kind of come together, maybe even, I don't know if you want to stand together, if that's what I would personally recommend. Okay. Okay. So we come back to you with the proposal here for a, a, a we'll give you feedback. Okay. okay. Pizza that would be okay. truly individual to yeah. your guests. Okay. 
So what we're looking at here is actually it's individually so cooked pieces of pizza really are. Yeah. that are okay. basically well, just the well, shell, well, just the dough, the, the thin crust as it were, um, we possibly really with, so I'm assuming, so the sauce so on it because we don't have this sauce yeah. over here. Right. So, right. Yes, oh, that's the sauce. Yeah. Okay, all right. Sorry, sorry. I wasn't here for the entire That's like a mortar pestle and you're, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Could have been an upside down mushroom. Okay. Anyway, um, so, so uh, they can basically have, there are these slices here, and they basically can choose off a platter or plate the items that they want to add. We've got all kinds of vegetables, and even the pineapple here, since you said the pineapple's always good. So, we've got the pineapple, we've got the cheese, um, mozzarella cheese that we discussed, um, green and red peppers, um, broccoli, the sauce, light or mm -hmm. as light as they want it to be. And then we haven't really figured out what, what the last vegetable would be. We can ask you what you like. We have veggie and the bell peppers option. Okay, okay. We have a constraint of, I feel like on the spot. So I, I really wish that you had brought some right. right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say nuts. Let's go with some yeah, kind of crunchy. Okay, yeah. something crunchy, so like a pine nut or a... <laughs> And you know, as, as we go along with this, and we're getting this ready, if there's other ingredients that you would like, we can also provide those. I'd like to see a little variety in the cheese. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Section crumbled blue cheese. this kind of fast delivery or delivery on Friday? And because some of people that come to your party may want uh, more dessert than, than pizza, we can also have some chocolate and some cinnamon sugar. That's an excellent idea. I love that. I didn't even know I wanted it, okay. but now I do. Uh -huh. <laughs> the art of disconnection. <laughs> 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 and if we say crumbs, um, yeah. I don't have the deal. Well, we have okay. the okay. that must be going to be Friday. You're looking awful lot like your pine nuts. I'm not sure if okay. I'm going to do the same. <laughs> 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 I'm a party guest. I choose my pizza crust that I want. I put right in my sauce on the top of my cheese. Do I have a little torch? Oh, we're going to have a little torch right here, Frankie. Table side. Yes. What's the word for that? There's actually a word for that when they use the torch. They have a blow torch. Yeah, it's like something like that. No, there's a different, there's actually, no, there's literally a catering term. All right, it's escaping me. Hi, guys. Okay, we went a little over.